Welcome back to the Relationship Mentors podcast. This week's episode, we are going into all the details on what actually makes up a high value man. And I feel like Charlie is such a great person or co-host to have on this topic because like I said in the last podcast or one of the podcasts is that before we became relationship coaches, Charlie was specifically working with men and helping men become high value men. And he also did, yeah, you can share all your information about what you've done with men. However, the work that you have done has been super transformative, so. Yeah, when I first started coaching, when I got into this, my passion was really helping men because so many men were struggling in their day-to-day life and didn't have the tools to really unlock their potential. I feel like men have so much potential in themselves but the current world really makes it difficult for them to use that potential. Like there's so many distractions, there's so many things that take their attention, there's so many things that dampen their potential. And this ends up in so much anxiety and depression and pent up energy for them. And they struggle in their relationships because of that. And that's why you see in the world now, there's so many low value men and they haven't got their life together. And women are struggling because they can't find any high value men so I feel like this relationship is very, this relationship, this <laughs> podcast is very important to talk into that. And when I first started coaching, I was helping men with their confidence, with their mindset, really getting them on track, helping them really discover what they want and then put their energy towards that, just make it really easy for themselves. And then started running men's groups as well. So on the Gold Coast here, I was running men's groups and it's really an opportunity for guys to get together, really talk into what's coming up for them, how to navigate challenges in their life and especially around their relationships as well. And through that, just really figuring like what makes a high value man in this situation so that women actually are attracted to these guys because singleness is such a big issue now, right? 100%. And I also feel like this podcast is so great for women who are listening so they can actually realize what a high value man is and they don't have to always put up with the low vibrations or like the low quality men that they can actually high high value women can increase their own value by being with a high value man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so this one's really important and yeah, super excited to get into this one. Excellent, so let's go into the first point. So the first point that we've written down is that a high value man is emotionally intelligent. Mm, I feel like women are generally better when it comes to emotions. It is more natural for them. They feel more emotions. They feel deeper emotions when they're growing up, I feel like women talk about their emotions more. Whereas guys, sometimes they're never taught how to be emotionally intelligent. They're never taught what these feelings are. Like imagine feeling all these complex feelings in your body and then not knowing what they are and then feeling shame about certain things and feeling anger, but not wanting to express anger because it's bad to feel anger. And yeah, it just makes it really complex for guys. But when they're emotionally intelligent, this means they're very aware of their emotions. And emotions are very much like a language So you could read at a fourth grade level, you could read read at an eighth grade level, or you could read like someone that's been reading books for years, right? Like you can be really competent at that. And it's the same with emotional intelligence as well. Like you could understand the basic emotions like anger, sadness, fear, hurt, guilt, grief, shame, like the bad ones or joy, fun, excitement. But there's really, there's way more depth to that. Like there's so many emotions that fall under those big emotions. There's something like 34,000 emotions. Wow. I don't lot. know who counted those, but it's a lot. And, <laughs> and we know happy, sad. <laughs> yeah. Angry. When you're self-aware of those, when you feel an emotion in your body and you're able to name that emotion and express that emotion to your partner, that builds so much emotional intelligence. And having the awareness around your partner and things that come up for her as well, I feel like it's a massive piece. Yeah. I was like, from my point of view, for emotionally int- intelligent, especially in a high value man or just in a man overall the man should be holding a lot of the masculine energy within the relationship he doesn't have to hold all the masculine energy but at least a large percentage of the masculine energy and a divine masculine is able to hold the feminine and help the feminine feel safe to be in her feminine however if a man is not emotionally intelligent if he can't even handle his own emotions to acknowledge his own emotions or hand, yeah, deal with his emotions. How do you expect a man to support his partner and be there for his partner when women are naturally more expressive about their emotions? It's mm. like for a 
healthy relationship to really thrive, a man should really be in touch with his emotions and have that emotional intelligence. So he's not able to not just able to handle his own emotions and process his own emotions, but he can actually hold the feminine and hold his partner when she's going through her waves of emotions. Mm, I love that. Yeah. It's if your man is shutting down or he's getting defensive, that's a big sign of lack of emotional intelligence. Like he's not regulating himself. He's just reacting on his instincts, his fear instincts. He feels attacked. So he's just reacting. He's defending himself. When really, if they can emotionally regulate themselves and they can have the awareness around what their partner is feeling and that she's just communicating an emotion, it's not all logically correct what she's saying. She's just communicating how she feels. So if your man is able to emotionally regulate himself, have the awareness around what you're actually needing, ask better questions, and you can get to a solution where you feel more connected after an argument rather than less connected, like that's a huge sign of a high value man. Exactly. And really being able to see her and hold her when she's in those, when, when she's in her heavy emotions. Yeah. Not just trying to fix straight away, yeah. not thinking, oh, there's an issue. Something's wrong. I need to do something about this. It's like, no, you can just sit there. You can be with her. You can let her express herself and then she can feel safe in that. And then she opens up even more, really gets into her femininity and feels safe to hold those emotions. And then that guy can really support his woman in that. And that makes her feel so, so safe and connected. Yeah, I love that so much. Okay, so the next one is he is self-led. So you wrote this one down, which is really cool. I did put a few dot points underneath it so we could cover everything. Mm. But did you want to dive into it first and then I can say the dot points? Yeah, leadership is very important in a relationship. You always hear that. You want to have like the direction of the relationship. You want to take the lead. But it's so important for men. The first step in that is being able to lead yourself. Like if you can't get yourself into the gym or exercising or eating healthy or you can't get yourself a job or a driver's license or you can't sort out your finances, you can't hold down any friend groups, like that's not being self-led. That's struggling in yourself. And if you can't lead yourself, how are you going to lead a relationship? So it's so important for men to step up in that, look at the areas of their life and be like, what am I great at? Okay, how can I map that across into other areas of my life? How can I develop strong friendships? How can I be disciplined in the gym? How can I work on my emotional intelligence? Like if you can't self lead yourself to become better, how can you lead a relationship to become better as well? Exactly. And as you were saying all of that, I definitely believe it's a belief you're not necessarily born a high value man. It's such a skill that you adapt into. It's such Mm. a skill, especially when it comes to being a self-led man and all the dot points I put underneath it is like, he takes accountability. Like he's not blaming other people for the situations that are happening in life. He's taking full responsibility for it and taking full responsibility for his health. The, like if he's not happy with the way his body looks, he's taking full accountability that he's hasn't been going to the gym. He makes himself go to the gym or eat healthy, things like that. Do you have any on that point? I think the accountability or- is a huge piece. Like you need to learn to be accountable, not to always be held accountable. Like who you are when no one's watching is the realest version of you. And if you're a man listening to this and when no one's around, you're just scrolling TikTok or watching porn or eating shitty food, skipping out on the gym. It's like, that's not a self-led man. Just because no one's watching doesn't mean you should let your standards drop. Exactly. And another point I had was... A self-led man, he is a decision maker, especially a guy in his masculine, not saying that he's in the relationship, for example, he's not the one that's constantly always making the decisions, but he is able to make the decisions and he is a decision maker. He is decisive. He's not always putting it onto his female to make the decisions and to plan everything. It's like the self-led man, the high value man is making those plans, is making the decisions. Mm. I feel like with these energies, we say masculine, feminine, it's like the more confident you are, the more in your natural energy you will be. So the more confident a guy is, the more trust he has in his own decision making, the more he backs himself. He doesn't have self-doubt. He backs himself fully. And that's very attractive to a woman. When a woman's fully in a feminine energy, she trusts a man. She can surrender into the man's decision and let him take the lead. But she needs a strong masculine for that to happen. So the first step is a guy actually making decisions. And these don't have to be big decisions. These can be things like choosing what film to watch, choosing where to go to eat, choosing what time we're leaving the house, 
choosing what food we need from the supermarket. Like tiny decisions like this really take the weight off your partner's mind. Because if she has to make all the decisions all the time, she's going to be in her head. So she's not in her body. So she's not going to feel her emotions as deeply. She's not going to feel as connected because she's having to think all the time. But when you can take that um, cognitive weight off her mind, then that really frees her up to express herself. Yeah, I really love that. Especially like when you were saying all the little decisions, because I just know even for myself, sometimes it's, just, it's all the little decisions that I feel like are mentally fatiguing for me. Mm. And so like you taking on those responsibilities, it just makes my life so much easier, as well as it allows me to be more receptive to the relationship and receptive to other things because I'm not so in my head of having to get things done, mm. if that makes sense. And what feels great as man is taking that weight off. When we were in Bali for six weeks, I rode the scooter every day. Like Mia was on the back of the scooter. Mm. I figured out directions every day. I figured out where we were going. Mia didn't even have to think about looking at a map. You didn't look at a map the whole time, yeah. probably. I think not even just in Bali. I feel like in Bali, I re really incorporated like how much I just trusted you fully. Mm. I think traveling with you made me realize how much I'm able to trust you and how great you are at leading and making those decisions. When it became super prominent for me is when we went to Paris. It was like, Charlie didn't even want to go to Paris. I was like, come on, like, please, please, <laughs> like, please. I want to go to Paris so, so much. And I'm so grateful. I was like to a point where I was like, I'll just go by myself. Like I just want to go so much. And you're like, no, of course I'll go with you. And I'm so grateful that you did because it was because of you. You helped me with directions so much or because it just made me realize, oh, wow, like I, <laughs> you're all really good at directions and I would have gone in the opposite way. And you were able to find these really amazing restaurants and get yeah, for us to go to. And it's like, I, without you there, I wouldn't have, seen gone to these places probably I wouldn't have felt safe going by myself all those places but we went to really cute places outside of the main city a little bit mm. and then I would have saved so much going with you saved me so much time of not getting lost as well <laughs> yeah it would have got lost and like so being much. more yeah because the way that you think is differently to me and so yeah it was just so much more productive and mm. have you seen those memes on Instagram where a guy and a girl's <laughs> walking through an airport and it's like, what's going on in the guy's head? Okay, there's a guy walking there. The toilets are there. Okay, our gate's over here. Our bags are here. I wonder what's, what we're doing here. How can we get water before the plane? And a girl's like, do, do, do. I'm just a bird. I want to fly away. <laughs> it's so funny because like that's literally how I was that whole like three months that we were in the UK, like Paris mm. and Bali. I just like Charlie made all of the decisions was like what we were doing, what we we're doing. And like that wasn't. I think that we ever spoke about, I think I just always put it on you. Mm. Um, not saying that that's the way it has to be or should be or saying that that was fair at all. Mm. But I really enjoyed that. And that's something you want to work towards in your relationship. It's moving towards being able to trust your man fully and mm. having your girl fully trust you with the decision makings. Because lack of trust in a relationship, a lot of people think that is, my girlfriend thinks I'm going to sleep with someone else. That's like 1% of trust. Most of trust is, can I trust you to be there for me when I need you? Can I trust you to look after me? Can I trust mm. you to protect me? Can I trust you to not disrespect me? Like there's so many little things that go into trust. It's not just, can I trust you not to sleep with anyone else? Mm. And decision making is a huge piece in that, especially for guys. And when you take the lead straight away in organizing the second date, okay, get ready for seven. I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to take you somewhere nice cool that's so easy for a girl she doesn't even have to think about anything mm -hmm. yeah I love whereas that. it's like where do you want to eat oh i don't know what time should we leave oh whenever works for you it's like don't be too like tell your girl what to do not just give her like so many guys can be so nice and yeah. so wants to please her so yeah, much I don't they know will ask her a thousand questions mm. the example that i'm getting is like if you're in a dating situation and he organizes it's like let's catch up tonight and she's like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. And then he asks, what do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Where mm. do you want to eat? And sometimes it is just the nice guy in him because he wants to make sure that she likes it and she's happy and she's enjoying herself. But in reality, you're just putting so much pressure onto her mm. of having to make each and every decision. It'd be so much easier if you made the decisions for her. I remember there was one time when we had a date and I gave you like three options mm. out of the very few dates that I did plan at the beginning um, that 
like I wanted to make sure we were doing something that you liked. However, I didn't know like there's mental fatigue through mm. like making decisions. So it's like, these are three things that I want to do. And I put it like A, B or C, like which one do you feel like doing? Mm, I love that. I remember that actually. That was great. I don't remember what they were, but. It's like, I think it was for my birthday or something. We can do this, oh. this or this. I, I like, think one oh, was like a comedy that. show because it's like, I've always thought that would be like a cool thing to go to, but I've just actually I've never, never been to a comedy neither show. Neither have I. We should do the one. Yeah, I think that'd be There's good. like 20 minutes up the road in um, Home of the Arts. Yeah, I think there's like one every like Tuesday night or something. Mm, we should do that. Um, anyway, just to end on the point of he is self-led, I also wrote things as a self-led man is also growth-minded. So he's constantly, he's wanting to grow his own potential, knowledge, yeah. yeah, potential. He's driven, like he doesn't need what you said before he doesn't need any external motivation mm. he motivates he's, himself yeah he's motivated when he's on his own which means he's also ambitious yeah. within himself to improve himself and he has integrity and that really goes into he takes accountability like if he says he's going to do something he's going to do it mm. it's so attractive for a woman because mm -hmm. when you're dating someone it's like you're trying to get them to opt in into a life with you and if you're not showing any signs that your future, you're working towards a better future than your present, then why would your woman want to be a part of that? If you're not working on yourself and looking to a future and being intentional about a future that you want to get better at, why would a woman want to be a part of that? So it's like when you're actively growing yourself and being ambitious and aiming for something, that is so much more attractive to a woman. Mm. It's like entering a stock market at the right time. <laughs> like when you're buying into investments, you want to buy into it at the right time when you know the stock's going to go up. And think of that in a dating sense. Like you want to buy into a, a relationship when you know that person's going to get better. Imagine being with someone at their worst. <laughs> you hear that all the time. Like when people break up sometimes and then the girl goes up in value like 50%. And yeah. it's like, holy shit, she was with him. But it's like he probably just got her when she was unconfident, when she felt ugly in herself. She didn't look mm -hmm. after herself. She didn't love herself. Yeah, then she has some respect for herself, leaves that relationship, and then she goes up so much in value, and then she gets with the guy, and then it's just, yeah, yeah it's like investing. Yeah, and it's definitely like, on that note, it is important that you date a guy for where he's at now. Mm. Like, that's what you were saying. It's not just date someone for their potential. It's you're dating someone for the, all the qualities that they have now, and the fact that he has a growth mindset and he's still wanting to grow and develop, that's even more attractive because you know that he's going to evolve himself. Yeah, and if he's a piece of shit in this moment. And <laughs> exactly. So many people are in the in a relationship with someone's potential and not someone's current self. Yeah. It's, that's so true, hey. I feel like that's such old news now, but it's like it's such a common thing mm -hmm. that still is happening in relationships. And I think it's just yeah, it's like you need to stop dating people's potential and date them for who they are now mm. and knowing that they can grow. Mm. Okay, the third one is behavior flexibility. You're really good on this one, Charlie, like explaining this one. However, I really do believe the behavior flexibility has a lot to do with being able to be adaptable. Mm. We talked about it last night. We were going through a this or that in yeah. different things. And it's like, are you an extrovert or an introvert? I was like, like both really. Like I can be an extrovert when I need to be. I can be an introvert when I need to be. I can be loud and confident when I need to be. I can be quiet and gentle when I need to be. It's like being able to do all these things is so great. And people limit themselves so much. They put labels on themselves like being an introvert. So when they go into a room, they're the quiet one. They feel so tired afterwards. But that's just a label you put on yourself. If you tell yourself that, you're gonna achieve that. It's like whatever you tell yourself is true. So... Being able to have that flexibility and practice these things, like Mia mentioned earlier, none of these things are things you get at birth. It's things you practice. Every personality trait is something you practice. If you're an unconfident person, you get to practice that. If you're um, not great at emotional intelligence, you get to practice that. If you're not a good speaker, if you're not a good reader, you get to practice those things. Nothing is set in stone, I feel. Okay, then moving on to point number four of what makes up a high value man. It is, he is a great communicator. And not only that, but if you're able to be a great communicator as well as have self-awareness, where Charlie mentioned self-awareness all the way up at the top point as well. But if you have, if you are a great communicator and you are self-aware, that automatically can help you become someone that's able to set 
great boundaries between you and other people. It's like, it's so important that you're able to communicate strong and healthy boundaries, not only just with for yourself in a relationship, but if you're in a relationship and set healthy boundaries between you and other women as well. Mm, that's so and great. you and like your friend groups and things like that. Mm, like the human species is so complex. Being in a relationship is so complex. Expecting to know what your partner, expecting your partner, partner to know what's going on for you. Like that is very complex. You have to teach your partner how to love you. You have to get mm. on the same page. You have to build connection. You can't just rely on senses and hoping the other person knows and assumptions and hoping they are a mind reader. You need to communicate what's going on for you. And it's like your ability to communicate your desires will determine the quality of your relationship. So if you can't articulate and understand what's going on for you and what you need out of this relationship, then you're not going to get it. So it's like, yeah, working with someone else, you need to be able to communicate your needs and that really starts with understanding your needs doesn't it exactly and it's not just in your relation like your intimate relationship it's any relationship that you're having it's like you becoming a better communicator plus get being more self-aware so you can communicate that it will help you so much with your career just any everyday conversation that you're having you'll be able to articulate exactly what you mean and how you mean to say it mm. which that in its own transforms the quality of your life because imagine only having a vocabulary that's quite small and you try and explain yourself and then you, the point never gets across because you're not articulating it correctly mm, that's so great that's something i've been got way better at like doing more podcasts and speaking to more people and talking to clients and reading books and listening to my audios back not using as many filler words i remember when i first i listened back to my first podcast and the amount of filler words I use, like, um, like, yeah. And, um, to now actually being more articulate with my words and not having to use all these filler words and feel awkward in pauses, but actually feel great in conversations, feel like I can mm -hmm. communicate well, feel confident in what I'm saying. And then I'm more likely to want to open up to women you know exactly and something that I've really found even being on this podcast or if we've done any speaking events together I've benefited from Charlie very much so because I'm learning to articulate my emotions <laughs> in a lot more especially when it comes to relationships and my past experiences things like that sometimes I can just go off because I'm new to other people asking me specific questions and me to give a specific answer in front of an audience and then I'll go off and then Charlie's there to articulate exactly the point that I was trying to get out <laughs> like, and that's, that's such a funny mind reader thing <laughs> me uh, so, yeah we were, we were doing a speaking gig in front of this audience and a woman asked me a question the panelist and he is so passionate about it and she talks and you did it going in so many directions and for in me head. i didn't necessarily notice that it wasn't one straight line because in my head it's it's all <laughs> happening yeah when you get a thought you get an idea in your head and trying to articulate that yeah. through a microphone and you have to do it in a way that it makes sense and it builds a little story and you have it in like step by step but Mia's brain works completely different where it goes 20 different directions she sees yeah. all these visuals she talks about all these things which is so, so beautiful. And like I said before, like it's such to be a high value woman or to be a high value man, all of these skills that we're mentioning, it's such a skill to adapt. And so to me, it, I feel like it had been a skill that I never necessarily came to my awareness that I even needed to improve on until we started doing podcasts and speaking gigs. Mm. Then I realized, okay, this is something that I really need to start working on. Mm, and it's not until you do that stuff. Exactly. So yeah, being able to communicate as a man is so important. Obviously it's important as a woman as well, but being a high value man, being able to articulate what's going on for you and keep your girl in the loop because your girl wants to feel reassured. And if she doesn't know what's going on inside your head, she's going to feel unsafe and she's going to mm -hmm. kick up the dust. She's going to create chaos. Like there's nothing more chaotic than a woman in a relationship that doesn't feel reassured. She's going to bring up so much shit for you because she doesn't feel safe with you. But when you can articulate and keep her on the same page and let her know where you're at and where you're going, that makes her feel so much more safe. Yeah, a woman, there's no safer feeling for a woman than a man that makes her feel reassured. And the best way to do that is through communicating effectively. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. And then my last point is point five, which is a bonus point, which is 
what actually makes up a high value man specifically within a relationship. So for me, I wrote that he is respectful, loyal, chivalrous, and supportive. Mm, chivalry is a big one, isn't it? Yeah. For you me, it's shit. such, it's like an old fashioned, like for me, I love it because it's so like old fashioned type of love, which I do love, love. However, chivalry, even in like the modern day, it just shows so much respect. Like I feel like chivalry is so respectful mm. to be like, oh, let me open the door for you. Like, let me go ahead of you so I can open the door and hold it for you and anyone else that walks through. Like, I think that is just so classy yeah it's classy it's so respectful not just to you and your significant other but also for everyone else around you Mm. like i just feel and like manners it's just so polite yeah so like chivalry and respect i feel like just go so hand in hand Mm. and wanting to do that wanting to be chivalrous like i I don't want mia to carry anything whenever we leave a car and there's bags to carry Ideally, I want to carry all of it for Mia so it makes her life I easier. I really enjoy that. <laughs> you really, you never really have nice. to carry anything. And when it's great for her because she feels like she's being looked after. And it's mm-hmm. great for me because I love the feeling of looking after her. It's such a win-win situation, isn't it? Yeah. it? It genuinely makes me feel so special. And it's something that we speak about a lot here where there's a lot of things that I didn't even accept in my previous relationships because I didn't believe I was worthy, but in the relationship, I didn't believe that was a case. I just believed I was like, I'm an independent woman. I don't need a man to carry my bags or do this for me. And then realizing once I finally felt safe in my feminine energy, that is like, oh, it's actually, it. I feel so great when Charlie carries my bags for me. Like it's just such a freeing feeling and I feel like I don't have any weight on me. Mm. I'm not physically carrying any weight. Mm. I and just I'm, love it. And for a man, at his core, he wants to feel capable and he wants to feel like he's doing a good job in that relationship. And if he can provide for you, if he can carry your bags, if he can make your day a little easier, if he can open the door for you, if he can take out the bins, like that should make him feel good. That should make him feel like he's taking the weight off you. That should make him feel like he's looking after you. And to a man in his, like, if it's a high value man, that'll make him feel great. So that's really how you spot a high value man. If like, if he wants to make your life easier, um, he will. Exactly. And every opportunity he gets. I also just think, yes, respect falls underneath chivalry as well. I feel like just respect overall is so important in a relationship. Like all of these points that we have said, a lot of like, sometimes you can have all of those in your relationship, but if you truly don't respect your partner, like if you, their partner truly doesn't respect you or the relationship or themselves, they are going to self-sabotage it or they are going to do all these amazing things for you, but still disrespect you behind the scenes or to your face. So that's why respect is so important. And I feel like it's such a valuable, valuable thing for everyone to have. Mm, and all this stuff is built on top of respect. If you don't respect your partner, you're just going to treat them like shit. The amount of, I think disrespect is the biggest thing, biggest issue I see in relationships. When people come for coaching, they're just being disrespectful. They're just not treating their partner well. And that just breaks so much trust. Yeah. What I think is disgusting that's happening within a society overall is how much disrespect is within a relationship that is being normalized. Mm. That... There's so much disrespect happening within a relationship that you're seeing it online and you're seeing it in your other friend groups and your other friends' relationships that you believe that it's normal when in reality, it simply is just disrespectful. And so that's really sad. So I'd like to see that evolve and change over the years. Even I've had guys reach out to me like, feel like it's normal to watch porn in a relationship. Like if you're watching porn behind your partner's back and she finds out and she's mad at you and you're like, why is she mad at me? That's so weird. She's so, oh, she's so needy. She's so up me about it. But it's like, can you see how disrespectful it is? And obviously respect means a different thing to every single person. But just the overall, like, you know, if you're respecting your woman, but sometimes you need that self-awareness piece to see the disrespect. So it's like, put yourself in her shoes or put yourself in his shoes and see, would it be okay if it was the other way around? Yeah, exactly. I feel like that's the best thing is if you wouldn't want your partner to be doing the exact same thing to you, you, why are you doing it in the first place? Mm, And you know, if you're being respectful deep down, like ask yourself, is this shitty behavior for me right now? 
So yeah, I feel like this is such a big topic, the high value man, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. Why don't we just wrap up? I think I think since you have worked with so many men and you've watched them go from where they are at and mm. help them become high value, and from the things that you've shared with me, they've not only just improved their quality of their relationship, but most of the times they've improved their business. They've improved so many other mm. areas of their life. So if you were just to leave everyone with one... Yeah, for every single man, it's working on themselves. Like if a man doesn't feel good in himself, he's not going to make his woman feel good. If he he needs to look after himself first, like a king needs to look after his kingdom first. If he's not getting in shape, if he's not building his business or working towards a mission, if he's not, if he doesn't have direction in his life, if he's not motivated, if he's given in to shitty habits and stuff, he's not going to be great in a relationship. So a man needs to look after himself first. Like a man needs to make himself feel great. He needs to have a mission. He needs to be disciplined. He needs to be working on his physical health. And that's what makes it, and that that really transfers over into the relationship. So the main thing for men is looking after himself, is making sure he feels great in himself. He feels confident in himself. And then that transfers over. Yeah, I love that so much. And I we do also find as well that some men feel like they have to be all of this before they get into a relationship. And that isn't necessarily true. They could be working on all these things and still get into a relationship and still choose to improve on all of these points. Mm, exactly. It's a never ending thing. Exactly. But if you're a man, if you're single and you're wanting to get into a relationship, like learn to be self-led, look after yourself, self-motivate yourself when no one's looking. Don't choose to be a lazy piece of shit. Choose to actually work on yourself and develop yourself. Like treat yourself like you're someone responsible for helping and then take it from there. Yeah, have that integrity for yourself and within yourself. Amazing. What are you excited for this week, Mia Cherry? I am excited for... Our friend has invited us to... He's hosting a dinner which has just evolved into this massive... (laughs) Like he's going to be at his house and then now it's at a venue. It's like we always have like dinners at friends' places and I gather this was one of them by the sounds of it. And then as the day progressed, it's just evolved to like I think a bigger group and a venue, then it's upgraded to a different venue. Mm. And then there's like a list that you have to show your ID before getting in. Yeah. So it just sounds like I'm just interested and very intrigued to see what it actually (laughs) is going to be like because Mm. it was just hosting dinner at, at his house to this venue. So I think mm, I'm just gonna be fun. excited for that because there's quite a bit of an unknown aspect to it. Yeah. What about you? I'm excited for a haircut. So we'll, I'm leaving this podcast <laughs> right now to go for a haircut. And I've been needing a haircut for a few weeks now and I just yeah. haven't got around to doing it. So I'm excited for that. I feel a bit great. fresher. Yeah, I love that. Amazing. Anyway, I really enjoyed this podcast. I feel like that was really great, especially it being such of Charlie's niche Mm. back in the day back in day well still relevant Mm. anyway i thank you guys so much for listening your support really helps us grow this channel all your likes and your shares and any comments that you want to add to the bottom of the videos hoping you guys have a great day and you guys will see you in the next one see you guys